One of the most common things that we see in video games is a health bar. We see this most of the time in games like MMORPGs and other games that have a player character on them. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how to create a simple health bar. Stay tuned for that. Before we start this video, this video is affiliated with Unity. Unity has been helping us to create awesome games and today is their 10th year anniversary. And so we here at Weekly How, we are very happy to be part of this celebration and share with you guys the Mega Bundle 10. Starting today, October 21st and until 11th of November, everyone can save up to 90% off the following bundles. The first bundle contains the Pro Edition of Combat Collection, which costs $23, but now you can get it for only $10, including the rest of the assets like Fantasy Horde, Low Poly Characters, and Golem. Not only that, but you can also upgrade it to the next bundle and get the previous bundles. So let's say if you purchase the third bundle, which contains Sui Moto Water System, them, that means you will get everything for only $36. Check the link in the description below and don't miss this opportunity to get these awesome assets at a very low cost. And also, we wanted to wish Unity a happy birthday. So for this video, we have Mr. Douglas as our player character and I have added few animations for him and it's idle, hit, and dying animation. So whenever he gets damage, the hit animation will be played and when he runs out of health, points then the dying animation will be played and so let's actually start by setting up our animator let's create a new parameter and so we'll click this plus button and select float and we'll call this hit and we'll create another one we'll select bull and this time we'll call it death and then next we'll select the transition from idle to hit animation and right here in the inspector we'll add a new condition and select hit must be greater than 0.1 also, let's make sure that the has exit time is unchecked. That way, the animation can transition to hit animation as soon as the hit parameter is greater than 0.1. And for the transition from hit to idle, we don't really need to do anything with it because as soon as the hit animation is finished, it will just go back to idle animation and just repeat the same process. Now for the dying animation, we have to make a transition not from each animations, but from any state node. Because regardless of the state, you'd want to play the dying animation as soon as the health points is zero. So let's right click on any state node and select the dying animation. Select the transition and for the condition, we have to make sure that this animation will only be played once the dead parameter is set to true. Also, before we go, let's click on the settings and ensure that the can transition to self is unchecked. Because if we leave it um, checked, it will just keep looping like um, unstoppable. So yeah, just uncheck that and that should be good. And that should be it, honestly. Alright, so with that done, let's continue by creating the health script. So let's go over here in our scripts folder and hit right click, select create C-sharp script. Then of course, we'll call this player health. Let's open that with VS Code. First, let's create the public variable float and name it car health or current health. Then we'll just copy this line and just duplicate it. But let's name the other variable max health or maximum health. All right, let's save this for now. Let's go back to Unity and apply the script to our player character. And in the inspector, give the max health variable a value like 100 or something. And then next, we need to create a health bar. So right here in our hierarchy, Hit right click and select UI, then select slider. This should give us a canvas transform and inside of this is the slider. Let's select that and in the inspector, we'll uncheck the interactable, set the transition to none and set the navigation to none. So for the max value, there's actually two options that we can pick. It's either we set its value through another script or we treat this as a percentage value. You know, like 1 is 100, 0.5 is 50%, and 0 is 0%. Or actually, you can just set this to 100 like in our player health script. All up to you, but for this video, we'll let the script do the work so we don't have to worry about it because who knows, maybe you want to increase the life points, decrease it, I don't know. So as much as possible, we should automate everything so we have less work. All right, so next, let's actually remove the handle because we don't really need that anyway. And then let's give the fill a color that resembles health. Let's change its color to, of course, red. 
like so. All right, let's go back to our script. Here we have to use the namespace unity engine that UI. And then let's create the variable and we'll call it health bar. Save that and let's go back to Unity. And then once the script is saved, select Mr. Douglas and apply the slider to the health bar variable. Let's actually rename the slider to health bar. There you go. Back to the script, inside the start function, we want to give the cur health a value of max health. Then we'll also give the cur value of health bar a value of cur health. And also the max value of health bar with max health. And that way, whenever we run the game, the player will always have full health. Then we'll create a new public function and call it send damage. And we'll give this a parameter of float and name it damage value. And inside of this function, we'll decrement the value of curve health with the damage value. Then we'll also update the curve value of the health bar. So let's also use health bar variable and update the value of curve value with the value of curve health. So we're just passing values here and there. And I know we can just do this inside the update function. So whenever the player lose health points, the health bar will always be updated. However, personally, I don't like that. As much as possible, I try not to use update function unless it's very necessary. So my advice, if you really need it only once, then don't do it every frames per second because you're risking performance. All right, so let's actually start working on our player animation. Let's create another private variable and name it anim or animator. And then inside start, use anim and get component animator. Then inside of the update function, we'll create a float variable and give it the value of the parameter hit from our animator. And then we'll create condition if hit is greater than zero, then we'll decrement the value of hit with time that delta time multiplied by three. So basically, this is just the cooldown. So the animator will have time to go back to zero, but not too quickly. Then below this, we'll use the set float function and give the parameter hit a value from the hit variable, which updates every frame. All right, so this is not going to work yet because the hit variable is not going to be greater than zero in the first place. So in order for that to be true, we have to set the value of the hit parameter right over here in the send damage function. Just give it a value of one. Next, let's just create another if statement. If cur health is less than one, then we'll use animator that set bool. Then the first argument is a string, so we'll use the death parameter. Because if the current health is less than 1, which means 0, that means the player must be dead. Then for the second argument, we'll just set it to true. And lastly, we need to use the function send damage just for test purposes. So inside the update function, we'll add another if statement. If input that get key up, get key up, then key code space. And then we'll just call the function send damage and give a value something like um, let's use actually random dot uh, range and then make a range somewhere between 10 and 20. So if we save our script and go back to Unity, we should then be able to send damage to our player character. And when he runs out of health points, the player will die. And that's pretty much it for this video. With this single script, you can easily send damage to the player just by accessing the player health script. And if you want to heal the player, you can just do that by creating a function. But you know what? We'll do that in the next video because I find it really interesting. So yeah, look forward to that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more Unity related tutorials. And once again, feel free to check out the Mega Bundle 10 promo for great assets that you can use not only for your current projects, but also for your future projects. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.